do you plan an IELTS essay? Very important question. And I believe uh, the points that will come from this live will be very helpful for you. So I'm just going to invite my guest. How are you guys doing? I hope you're well. I'm trying to invite, yes, I've invited her. Yep, I've invited her, so she should be coming. How are you guys doing? You okay? She made it. Hi. Hi, Hi Amelia, you okay? Yes, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good to see you today. Good. Yeah. No, likewise, likewise. Right, it's very cold in Leicester at the moment. How's it to where you are? Quite cold here too. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. It's, it's, it's really strange because yesterday the British summertime started, so our clocks uh, changed, but it does not feel like summer, does it? No, not yet. <laughs> hopefully soon. <laughs> so hopefully soon, yeah. So um, planning an essay, that's a big deal. What? How many words are we talking about? When you plan fifty, okay, no big deal, really. If you okay. think about it, <laughs> um, well, I, I guess what I want to start with is to say that this is really no big deal. Um, I know that for some students who have to prepare for IELTS and they see the IELTS material for the first time, it can be quite overwhelming. But yeah. I want to put it in the perspective for you. Uh, this is just 250 words uh, when at uni I think the first assignment is usually 1500 words yeah uh, that's a thousand and five hundred uh, to imagine it better if not more um, IELTS essay is just an IELTS essay and I have conversations with a lot of my students who have gone through IELTS and are now at uni and um, they say the same thing Right. Okay. <laughs> actually, if you look at it in, in that in that sense, it's actually not that much. Right. Just want to give a, a quick a quick uh, mention. So, welcome to Naeem. Uh, let's see what is here with us. Uh, Makendi and Brown Baby too. Thank you for joining us. Rotima. We've got Razjot and Man of Carbon. My goodness, very strong guy. Carbon is a very strong element. Godfrey. Hello. We've got Jose. We've got Harry B. And we've got Uncle Timothy. Hello, Uncle Timothy. That's a nice one. And Queen Lammy. Hi. Oh, oh. right. <laughs> okay. So, so where, do, where do you start? Um, I think there to, to realize that this is not, um, you know, such, I think, well, let's, let's start here. When okay. I started preparing for my IELTS test and I saw the material, I got slightly overwhelmed, especially with task one. But um, essay, I believed, was not too much of a big deal for me personally. But one thing to realize is that it was not designed for you to fail and it was not designed to be impossible to do. Right. So, that's really important. That's, yeah, that's really important to hear. Yeah. Mindset first. Um, and so okay. the, the next thing to, to think about is that, yes, it is challenging. So you have to write 250 words in 40 minutes. Um, so it is a stretch. It is a challenge for anyone. And I did feel challenged myself having been an IELTS and an English teacher for quite uh, a few years at the time of taking the test myself. But again, um, I am one of those people who get overwhelmed very easily with big tasks. And so one of the things I would say is to definitely chunk it and to take one thing at a time. So within those 40 minutes, I think the most important thing is to plan to manage your time well. So five okay. minutes for planning at the beginning and five minutes at the end to check and correct your answers. These right. are musts. In between, you have 30 minutes to write an essay. 250 words is five short paragraphs of this yeah. thing. It's literally, yeah. um, I, I tell my students, it's enough if you write 14 sentences for your essay. Now, 14 sentences is not so much. Okay. So that, that's something to think about to start with. Don't make it complicated than it already is. A lot of my fellow teachers uh, advise uh, the candidates to, to write as much as they can. And while 
it is a good idea because you want to show uh, your range of grammar and vocabulary. I don't think this advice is given by anyone who's actually been in an IELTS test room <laughs> and had oh. to do it themselves. Um, so I would say quality over quantity. I was going to say, yeah. Thing to think about. And mm -hmm. it's, it's quite scary, actually, how many teachers say, oh, right, as much as you can. Um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> okay. So um, if you write uh, up to 280 words, okay. um, that's fine. Unless you are a highly advanced writer and you type very quickly, I'm fine with that. But quality needs to be first. Priority, priority. Okay, so don't write rubbish. Just think before you write. And like you said, plan the first five minutes and check in the last five minutes. So in between, you've got some time. So that's when you write. You were, you were saying roughly how many paragraphs? Um. My suggestion here, and again, uh, this is about uncomplicating IELTS, yeah. Yeah. is to write um, four paragraphs in total. So okay. introduction, two body paragraphs, and a, and a conclusion. Um, thinking about it, you need two sentences for the introduction, two sentences for the conclusion. So about 10 sentences between the two paragraphs in the middle. Right. This will allow you to control the length. So a lot of students write sort of as a stream of consciousness. Uh, it kind of gets uh, a little bit out of hand. Um, you cannot afford to do that in IELTS and so it is hugely about controlling it. And um, <laughs> I, I don't want to be a control freak. I don't want to turn anybody into sort of a writing robot, but it's simply making it, uh, optimizing it, you know, yeah. making it um, a, a, a successful experience considering the time constraints. Well, we've got a question from Meet Burner for you. So Meet Burner said, hello to Amelia. Hi. Hello. Right. So his question is, how possible is it for a remark to come back better or more successful? Um, how would you answer that? Re remark. Is it after doing a, an IELTS exam? Can you ask request for it to be remarked? Um, it is possible. However, as far as I know, um, IELTS have put tremendous measures in place for the marking to be um, as uh, accurate as possible the first time around. And so they have systems in place where several examiners uh, have a look at your writing at the same time. Uh, there are some things that do slip through through the net. Um, so it, it is still quite possible. I think in general, I encourage my students to have their work remarked. It is a bit of a risk okay. um, okay. because as far as I know, um, when the remark is done, if mm -hmm. it changes, then uh, you're not charged for it. If it does not change, uh, they uh, they keep the fee and it's quite substantial. I think it's 65 pounds or something like that. But can um, the grade go up or down? Could it go either? Because he's saying that, is it possible for the grade to go up? But could it also go down? It's possible to go up. Um, okay. I have not heard of... Uh, cases when it uh, it is lowered okay. and on the remark so um that's another thing to bear in mind uh, but yes it is still possible that it will go up um another thing is and something that i'm very very sorry about is whenever my students are in a situation like that i wish i could see their writing um it's only possible for an IELTS examiner in secure conditions. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of things happen on the way. And while, you know, you might expect for your results to be consistent over time, let's say you take three tests in a row and you would expect for your writing to be roughly at the same um, level all the time. Uh, what we do not think about is my students come back to me and say did you write everything i i ask did you write everything yes, yes. 
uh, what did you write? What was the the um, the topic about? And then it turns out that they forgot about an element. And so that brings me to the next point, really, when when um, planning an essay, you really need to know what you're doing. And so uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, usually IELTS topics are have several elements in them. So uh, they, um, let's say, mention several aspects of one topic. Okay. You need to make sure that all of this is covered. And on top of that, that you really uh, do answer the question. And right. so the, the question is key. So if it's about problems and solutions, uh, what usually happens is that, um, and again, this is, I think, human bias. Um, a lot of students concentrate a lot on the problems and very little on solutions. Um, sometimes those solutions are simply underdeveloped. So um, they sort of uh, have a little bit of, again, stream of consciousness, writing a lot about the problems. And then the solutions are uh, addressed in one sentence in the conclusion. It's not oh, like that. So it's the structure. You've got to be careful with your structure. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, um, the, the question type determines the structure of the essay. Oh, okay. Got it. And so then that's what you do in your planning. And that's what you yeah. plan for in the five, five, first five yeah. minutes. Yes, this is something that you need to be aware of from the start. So I would suggest, and this is, again, a huge revolution for most of my students when they hear um, one of the ways to, let's take, for example, the problem and solution essay, is to write an, a paragraph about problems and then a paragraph about solutions. That's actually quite a success considering that, like I said, earlier, uh, sometimes uh, solutions are addressed within one sentence uh, in the conclusion. And so my take on it is that we need some kind of balanced approach. And so I would suggest that for a well-executed essay, you will write about a problem and its corresponding solution within one paragraph and then tackle the other problem and its solution in the other paragraph. And again, give them equal space. So uh, within those paragraphs, more or less half of the paragraph will be about the problem and half of it about the solution. And the same um, in the second paragraph, um, giving that balance and also um, making you at the same time make the um, organization of the essay a little bit more uh, sophisticated. Sure. Yeah. Because if the paragraph is just about problems and solutions, okay, um, that's the standard sort of almost mechanical approach. If you, however, turn paragraphs into a discussion of the points, so um, a given problem becomes the topic of the paragraph, you, you have something a little bit more sophisticated, something a little bit higher level going on. Wow, okay. So you can generate ideas. So once you've actually talked about the problem and the solution, and if you elaborate on the solution, that's you get brownie points for that. You get points for well, yeah, because adding more Yes, and especially, you know, most of your students, um, Afsana, I think, uh, aim for 6 or 6.5. Yeah. When 6.5 is um, uh, something we aim for, then uh, definitely one of the easier ways to um, raise your score is through uh, the first two criteria, task response and task achievement. Uh, while, you know, improving your English can take time. Um, eradicating spelling or grammar mistakes takes time. Um, the uh, this these are the things we are more in control of, and this is this is how I mostly help my students raise their scores. We talk about how to respond to the question well, how to uh, organize the essay well, and so. Um, if you tackle the problem and its solution in the same paragraph, what you end up with is a is a well-developed paragraph. Right. Um, yeah. 
It's really, what you said is very refreshing because what it is, uh, let me just give you a bit of context with regards to the student clients that I work with. Most of them, at the moment, they're all West African. I'm very blessed with that. Their English is spot on. So in terms of their grammar, their spelling is okay. But what you're trying to say, it, not okay, it's, it's more than okay because that's the way of life. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is that you actually focus on the technique and the way you answer the question and, the, and how you actually tackle the actual topic in the essay. So it's yeah. not... So it's the technique, basically. Yes, I, I've learned that through through experience. Most of the learners that end up studying with me uh, do it yeah. last minute. I have no, you know, and you know, knowing the nature of how we learn a language, right? It's th there is no way I can improve their English within within a month. Yeah. Maybe a little bit, but if, for it to be kind of confident and flexible use of the new language, I think we have slim chances. Um, okay. So the, the best way to work on it is to uh, pay more attention to how you answer the question right. and how you organize the essay. And I think the, the worst uh, misconception around IELTS essays is that students believe that they don't have, um, they they don't know how to generate ideas, and I don't think it's true. So students say, we don't know how to generate ideas. Then my colleagues throw themselves into an hour-long session uh, of generating ideas and so on. And while you simply are a curious human being and you know what's going on in the world and that should be enough for you to have enough ideas. Okay. While uh, writing an essay, IELTS essay, if you have two body paragraphs, all you need is two ideas. Yeah, okay. So instead of sort of um, mm, how to put this, bombarding the reader with many, many ideas. So some students think that they need to uh, sort of every sentence is a new idea and they have to just in a, let's say problem and solution essay, yeah. Um, yeah. show as many problems as they can within one paragraph and then as many ideas as they can in the other paragraph. It's not like that. You need two problems and then okay. two corresponding solutions to those yeah. problems, put them together in one paragraph each and develop, explain them well. And this is where you start writing like a level seven, band seven and Brilliant. one student. Fantastic, brilliant. So just adding more, it's, it's like putting meat on the bones really. So once you've answered the question, you've given a solution, then if you add more into it, that's where you, where you mean like generating ideas. We, you, you just need to like, probably, I don't want to sound like this, but probably use your imagination a bit more, just add a bit more. It's, it, again, it's not about adding more ideas, it's about expanding and developing uh, one idea. So if, present the problem, explain the problem, give some examples, present the solution, explain okay. the solution, give some examples. Much easier than having to come up with several problems and several solutions, right? Okay, okay. okay. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Do you know what? This comes into my life, for example, um, I teach GCSE um, science. So at this stage in, in, in the academic calendar, there is no time to learn. So it's very similar to your situation where you have students coming at very last minute, where, you know, the time of learning has gone. Actually, now is the time for technique. So that's what I'm focusing on right now in terms of it's just exam technique. Exams, exams, exams. So, yeah, thank you so much. I hope, guys, you have all... Have you got any questions for Amelia? Very well explained. My goodness. We should we should record this and sell this. So we should do something. <laughs> well, um, okay. if, if you so want helpful. to do visit my Instagram page, um, I have a few videos about uh, planning essays and something I haven't talked about in our lives yet. But actually... Um, I have a membership. It's only fifteen pounds a month, where you can plan essays and tasks one with me. So um, you have access to the library of all the previous calls, um, okay. and we take one topic uh, per month uh, for the essay and one task one per month for 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 the reports, and we 
sort of break them apart, plan them together. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have access to one, the library of the previous sources, and two, you have a chance to do it live with me um, uh, every month. So something to consider. And um, I've already sent them to you. You have links that I suggest. um, I'll put them in the caption, yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, guys, as you can see, Amelia is here. She has a big bank of past essays and recordings where she can actually go through with you and actually live, give you live feedback in your session. Just follow on IELTS with Amelia with an E, not with an A. And then you can just talk to, talk to Amelia direct and I'm sure she'll be able to respond and you can take it from there. So thank you so much, Amelia. That was really, really in depth. And I'm glad we've had this conversation. It's quite a sticky situation. You can't really finish this in a 15 minute conversation. There's so much. So we've just yes. we just did it in very short summar- uh, summarized points. But thank you so much. And um, I hope to hear from you very soon for our next topic. Uh, the next topic, scanning for IELTS. Uh, yes. So we're yes. going back to reading. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, please follow IELTS with Amelia. She is, an exper- very, as you can see, very experienced in her field. She has masses of resources. All you need to do is communicate with her. Book, some, book a session or two with her and then she will actually go through live feedback and actually go through banks and banks of resources for you so you don't need to stress about it. If, for example, you are watching this and you want to do an um, Oxford International ELLT test, I have I will put in an affiliate link later on. So if you want to have a go yourself several times, you can do it as many times as you want. It'll be £20 off. I can do that for you. Just go to the caption. I haven't, I haven't got to yet, but I'll put it in soon. Also, if you'd like to learn English language in the UK, whether it's Oxford, Brighton or London, you just need to get a visitor visa if it's less than six months. It is always best to learn actually in the native country. It is the best experience. Summer holidays coming up, Easter's coming up any time of year. It doesn't take long. Um, if that's something for you, just DM me direct. I'm more than happy to help you out with that. Thank you again, Amelia. That was really, really helpful. And I hope to hear from you very soon. Bye. All right, then. Bye. Bye, guys.